Russell, uh, everyone's in a pretty good mood after a good week. So what's the emphasis been since Tuesday night? Is it is it an easier week for you to chivy the boys along and keep them going and up? I think the emphasis has been the same, really. Uh, learn as much as we can from Tuesday, recover as well as we can, um, and then try and look at the best way to uh, implement our our game plan tomorrow. So, um, yeah, it's always the same. It was the same when we lost, uh, however many we did in a row, and uh, now we've won two in a row, nothing's changed. So um, the boys are in, obviously, in really good spirits because when you win games, it's the nicest feeling as a, a football player. So, um, yeah, they're in a really good place. Um, pretty much everyone's been used over the last couple of games. Um, and I think they understand now that anyone can be used at any point and you can go from not being involved to starting or being on the bench to starting. Um, so yeah, they're in a good place, the guys. It's been a nice atmosphere, um, but we have to be really demanding them. Now we have one more game to finish the week off and turn it into a really brilliant week for us. Um, and so much can change in football in seven days. So uh, yeah, we're looking forward to the game. The guys will get them as ready as we, we've got them, as physically as ready as we possibly can, emotionally and mentally the same. Um, and a bit more work to be done on that tomorrow to make sure they really understand what the game's going to require. Um, and then it'll be over to them. The, the psychology changes each week, doesn't it? We've gone from a week ago... The, the world is ending and four defeats and now two wins so now back at St Mary's and with half the people expecting you to lose to Leeds you've gone and done them and then this Saturday everyone will be arriving going well we're going to beat Rotherham because they're 23rd in the table that's how it happens yeah, the, worst, the worst trap you can fall into yeah. so like it's not changed here so when you're talking about the world's ending stuff, I think that's externally internally it's been the same process Been um, that we've behaved in the same way we've worked extremely hard um Giving the players as much as we can. The players have given us everything they've they've got, which is all you can ever ask for. So um, I think whatever goes on outside, and, and we have to guard against that. And you have to put it in context for the players as well. So we're aware of like the expectation will increase tomorrow. Um, but we're playing against a team that are fighting for everything. They'll be disappointed after their setback midweek. They fought so hard to get back into the game. They're giving everything they've got for Matt and his staff. And um, there's never an easy game in a championship ever ever, regardless of league position, regardless of form. Um, I think we showed that against Leeds last week. Everyone went into the game they're off the back of four clean sheets and wins and we're not. And we're having a tough moment and then we perform like that. So, um, yeah, there's never an easy game. So you have to put it into context emotionally always for the boys. Always is the most important part of the game because if you don't connect them to that, then the tactics really count for very little. So we're going to play against a team that are going to come here, fight, fight for everything, make it really hard for us. And also come here, like you said, with probably little expectation outside of their camp, um, which can free people up and uh, relieve them of any pressure they're feeling. So it's a really dangerous game for us if, we're, if we don't approach it in the right way. And I feel like we have. Um, and now we have to make sure we approach it in the right way on the pitch tomorrow. And that includes making sure we can create our own energy and our own atmosphere and make sure we give people something to really um, cheer about from the start of the game. Yeah, and, they, and they're used to being underdogs after getting promoted. They've stayed up with 50 points. You know, that's that's enough wins to them to turn up to games knowing that if they fight hard, they'll get their fair share of points. And that's what they do, isn't it? They will scrap. Yeah, they're a team littered with um, good experience in the league. Uh, some really good players. Um, Matt done a really good job at Exeter and done a brilliant job last year to keep them in the league. Um, and as I said, with that, they have a brilliant mentality to fight and run for each other. Um, and they've been really unlucky, really unfortunate to not win more games, to be honest. So... Um, we're really aware of the threat they pose and it's always about us, but we have to be aware of the threat that the team pose and, and the, the the place they're in. Um, and I'm pretty sure the only the only way they're going to get out of it is through working even harder and fighting and we have to be ready for that tomorrow. And we, we took a lot of the fight out of Stoke by controlling the game and, and showing real composure, but real aggression as well. And that has to be the balance in our game tomorrow as well. And we have to get that right. Um, and we have to build on the two wins. Otherwise, we'll, we'll all go into the international break, break a bit frustrated, I think. How much has the, the clean sheet helped? The Not just the defenders, but the defensive side of the belief of everything they're doing, because it's been a long time. And obviously getting that, it wasn't got easy. It was worked, they had to work yeah. very hard for it. It was a sort of, real championship game like that wasn't it away from home so that, I think that's good for the players isn't it yeah yeah I think um, I think we've defended really well in the last two games but it also comes off the back of looking after the ball much better so we've had to defend less there's been less moments in transition um, and the two always come hand in hand it's never you're trying to get both so you 
if you give up one to get the other, it's really hard to then get the other one back, if that makes sense. So we're trying to trying to find the balance between both of us at that dual season. We found much better balance in the in the um, in the way we've played the last two games, but we've looked after the ball better, which means we defend less. And when we've had to defend, the mentality to defend, the togetherness, the willingness to run and get back into shape and recover, uh, and also to press and make it predictable for, for each other has been really outstanding and we have to maintain that. Thank you. Okay. Moving on to the second section. Oh, sorry, yeah, you just mentioned, just, sorry, yeah, you just mentioned there about um, keeping the ball better and that's why the defence has improved. I suppose to Jan Benerick yesterday and I said to him, oh, you and Taylor are making quite a partnership, but he actually came back and said the exact same thing, although yes, we are growing together. It's been about what's been happening in front of us and, and to the side of us, so, but yeah, I suppose you agree with that. Yeah, well, yeah, they've, they've, def they've defended really well together. Um, so they've not had to defend a huge amount of moments in the box. Um, but when they have, they've done it brilliantly. And there's some really key bits to that that we've worked on um, with them in the video room on the pitch and they've taken on the instruction superbly. Um, but what they've done with the ball and the courage they've shown with the ball has enabled them to defend a little bit less and uh, less moments because the guys in front of them have uh, snuffed out counter-attacks and, and dealt with them better. So they've had less moments where they can get isolated. They've been really... Um, Brilliant with their detail together and working together. So I've been really, really, and both of them are like warriors. They're brave. They will block things, um, but they're also brave when it really matters with the ball. And and, the, and, the, and it's the courage with the ball. The last two games and their willingness to carry out the detail we've been asking them has been really incredible. So um, hopefully they can keep building on that. Yeah. How difficult can they make it for Jack Stevens when he eventually comes back to get back into the team? Also, captain, a massive leader. Yeah, I think we 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 miss Jack. Um, it was no coincidence when he came out of the team, we had a little wobble because of the calmness he brings on the ball and, and the aggression he brings out of it and the voice he gives. So that's not natural to too many people, but um, Taylor has a big voice. He's a real leader. You can see why he's been captain of, of England for a while now. Um, real takes real responsibility. Yanni as well has, has really started. He's took on a lot of responsibility the last few games, Yanni. He's, he's done really well. I'm really proud of him for that because um, I asked him to do that and we've asked him to take more responsibility and... He's really stepped up to that, which has been good. Um, and Jack, I think like any player will know that, I think he'll want to fight on his hands when he comes back because that's how he's made. It's in football, I think every year I was, I spent at, um, at Norwich every year, they try to replace me and you have to step up to it. And uh, fortunately found a way to always do that. And every footballer you have to. And the minute you, you, you get complacent or you don't think that's the case, then you're probably um, not hitting the level that you should be. So Jack will know that he's, and I think you'll want that because when he comes back, he'll want to fight because he'll know the club's in a, and the team's in a good shape, in a good position. He texted me before the game the other night and texted me straight after. Really pleased. Um, he's so supportive of his teammates whilst he's been injured in his every meeting still. Um, he's a hugely important part. Um, and when he comes back, hopefully he'll have to be a bit patient because the team's functioning really well. But I've got no doubt he'll earn his opportunity when he does come back and when he does, um, he'll, 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 he'll help us hugely. I said to Yang, in a couple of moments, I think he sort of dragged Flynn and, and Charlie away from sort of tempers flaring and yeah. I'm sort of pointing out a bit of leadership there. He's really modest about it. He sort of refused to take any credit for leadership and just said he's basically just being himself. But you have had to sort of coax a little bit out of that, I suppose. I think um, it's, it's, it's all you want is the players to be themselves in, in any moment. Um, in football, you just get a piece taken out of you every year, really, from the age of like six. Um, every year, coach, parents other players, whoever it is, you just lose a piece of yourself and the hardest thing to stay stay authentic and be yourself and um, trying to get some of the players back to just being themselves and being present and being in the moment and to feel things has is, is been, uh, every club we've been at, been one of the hardest challenges we've had because to play this way, you have to feel and you have to be brave and you have to embrace it and you have to feel the fear but do it anyway. Um, some players can get through that, some players can't. The ones that do, I think they really show the best version of himself. I think Jan is really starting to show the best version of himself. Um, he's incredibly professional. If you could build a centre-half in terms of like what they would look like physically and what they could do, wouldn't be very far away from Jan. Um, and now we're asking him to do something that's really different to what he's been asked to do before. And he's he's carrying it out to the very best of his ability. And every game he's getting better and better. So um, I'm really, really excited about what where he can get to, the level he can get to. Um, so, yeah, it's... Uh, it's a good thing for us that he's been willing to take that on. And, and of course, there's been a bit of pain in the process for everyone. And he's been frustrated. We've conceded so many goals and he really cares, Jan. Like, he really cares. And I think, uh, but what he's been able to do is, is lead and take responsibility. But 
He doesn't need to do it with the pressure of an armband, all this nonsense. He's just got on with his job. He focuses, he learns. We go through his clips. He's willing to be vulnerable and learn and accept certain things, and that's an amazing trait to have. And uh, I think when you're that big, it helps you can go in and calm things down. Um, and, yeah, he knows he knows the characters of the groups. He's been here a long time, so he knows which ones need a bit of help in them situations, and thankfully he's been there. Some great news for Charlie Alcaraz this week, but firstly, some great news for the club, that hopefully later they announced a one-year extension for Charlie. What sort of message does that send to him and, and Charlie back to the club? I think, like, if you do well, the club is, is really willing to... Um, to protect our assets and if you play well to recognise and, and reward you for when you do. So like Charlie had a lot of interest, a lot of noise in the summer. He's still here, which is great for us. The last two games have been his best two games um, for us. Uh, really exciting. He's in the Argentina squad. Uh, so the lads clapped him today on both fronts with a new contract and Argentina's um, the news. So uh, we told him he can pay for dinner for everyone now, which is good. Um, so yeah. He, funnily enough, he didn't understand that bit, but uh, yeah, he's been great. He's he's been, uh, you know, we spoke about it a few weeks ago, and he wasn't in the team for for various things, and um, he's come back in at the right time for him, I think, and the right time for us, and the team needed him, and he's delivered, and he's been great. Um, and we have a few bodies now who are who have come back in, um, and there will be one or two changes tomorrow because it's free game week for the first time in a while. We have people who have not done that for a long time, um, and Charlie's one we have to consider at the moment. But he looks fresh. He looks. The news has been good for him with Argentina. He's been desperate for it to get out so he can tell people. And um, yeah, I'm really proud of him the way he's come through. I'm really proud of the whole team the way they've come through a tough period. But Charlie's so young, he'll grow through so much through all of this. And um, he's been really outstanding the last couple of games. More well, opportunity there to train with you know, so many young people, players, obviously, chiefly Lionel Messi. Mm. Maybe if you were training him, you wouldn't have enjoyed it quite as much as he would as a tagging player, yeah. being able to learn from him. How much can you actually learn from somebody in a week camp? Well, he's, yeah, he's playing. I think what it takes, the way they behave in and around the place, um, the way they treat the staff and the, and the other players around them. And uh, I think it was always the thing I took from the best best players is um, that themselves are really secure in who they are and what they are. And, and actually they're, they've never lost that and they can go and play on the pitch in a certain way and um, they understand the value of everyone around them and how much they can contribute. And um, I'm, sure it'll be, I'm sure it'll be the same. I think Charlie's just going to get pestered now for shirts and all that stuff when he goes away but he just needs to go and enjoy it be himself and try and give the best version of himself he can if he does what he does with us every day he trains like a beast uh, really conscientious really hard working if he goes and does that he'll, he'll give a good account of himself and, and, and of, of this club as well so um, it's great news for him he's going away with the World Cup winners and the best player in the world one of the best players ever the best player ever and um, yeah I'm sure he'll take a huge amount from it and if if, any, if if anything else if not anything else he'll take a huge amount of confidence from it as well and Just finally for me and I apologise for asking you again because I ask for every two weeks people, people keep asking me mm. is there any update on Ross Stewart are you hoping to be able to see him on grass during the touch break we know not to expect him anytime soon Yeah no. we said he's not uh, going to be available for this block of games but he's back on the grass he's been back on the grass for a few weeks he's now integrating into the squad slowly but surely so Hopefully we see him sooner rather than later. Yeah, I can't give you an exact timeline because it's, these things are always always difficult. But um, yeah, it's nice to see the big man back out on the grass. And uh, you know, we've it's been good. It's been really nice to see him touching the ball and enjoying himself and smiling. He's good character, really, really good character. Um, yeah, and so uh, hopefully we'll get him back on the pitch and you'll see him involved very, very soon in the squad. Adam, just on Charlie, mm -hmm. um, it's been really fascinating to see in the last couple of games playing a different role. Mm -hmm. How did you get to that to that decision? What is it about his game that you that you liked that he could do that? Because I always think of him as a midfielder running onto the ball, and yeah, now he's playing with his back to goal a lot more. Yeah, so it's something he did. We, we had a good chat about it, um, and it's something he'd done in Argentina quite a bit. Um, he presses like a beast, so he sets that off for us and does it brilliantly. Um, just felt the team needed his aggression, his energy, and it's a role where there's less. Um, less scrutiny and less reliance on him being in our final third and defending and, and he can really free himself up a little bit and arrive when the team needs him and play on the top line and um, he's been unlucky not to score actually in both games so he's been he's been really outstanding and he's shown really good understanding of that role and it's a role he's not always going to play um, but it's a role we know he can definitely do and he can be really flexible for us Carlos which will be really really helpful for him and for us um, so yeah, he's been he's been really outstanding, and I just I don't know. We I had a gut feeling about it after Middlesbrough. It was something I felt um, the team needed, 
just a little tweak and um, I told him after the Middlesbrough game, we got back here on a Saturday night and I explained to him what was said in the interview and I, I didn't articulate it very well for a number of reasons and he was great about it. Um, and I said to him, you're going to play and you're going to play in this role and we'll work all week on it. And we did and he did it brilliantly. Yeah. Um, how do you balance his natural enthusiasm and aggression uh, with his need to just keep the red mist off him sometimes because he's got that which I love about him because mm. you want that Argentinian aggression yeah I can't take him. that away from him no. and at some point if it ends up hurting the team and him a little bit it's the way he'll learn from it um, but I'm not going to try and take away same as Flynn I'm not going to try and take away one of the biggest strengths of their game and their biggest attributes and their biggest assets so I think the minute you try and take that away you lose a bit of the, bit of the player and um, what gives them an edge and he'll learn he'll learn in his own way and we will try and help him for sure um, for sure but at the same time you can't you can't it's what makes them sort of players really really different and special